Have you ever wondered how new cars are being repaired in body shops? After watching this video, you will know some of the repair procedures and how they're doing this on new cars, so you will know what goes on behind the body shop doors. Cars are being made much different these days. You know, with the increased fuel mileage, they keep trying to make cars lighter and using different materials and different uh, ways of making these cars. You know, it's going to result in different repair methods. Now that they have that 54 regulation, 54 miles per gallon, where all cars have to average that, you know, that is going to even have more changes over the next few years than we've ever seen. There's probably materials that they are designing right now that we don't even know what they are. They have all these new things. Engineers are coming up with all these, you know, they're good ideas, but hey, how do you repair this stuff? Whenever I attended SEMA last year, I attended some training there last year, and it seemed like the theme last year was aluminum. It seemed like every class I went to, they talked about aluminum and how that's affecting the repair shops. And, you know, it talked a lot about repair methods and, and uh, some of the things that we're going to see. So I expected this year that there was going to be additional talk about aluminum and how some of that has evolved. However, there was very little talk about aluminum this year. It seemed like the uh, big focus was on the different types of steels. You know, you have, uh, you have mild steel, you have a high strength steel, ultra high strength steel, boron, trip. There's all these different types of steels and they can't be repaired the same. They're all different and they all require different repair methods. And that's what the, the big thing they was talking about and the importance of finding the OEM procedures. You know, that's the uh, recommended procedures that the manufacturers give to you to tell you how this car needs to be repaired, where these certain steels are located so you'll know how to repair them and what the proper procedure is. That was the big theme this year. And that's exactly what this class that I attended that I'm going to talk to you about, you know, it was talking about the different types of steels and the repair procedures. And one of the things brought up was rivet bonding. Now rivet bonding is nothing new. It's been around a long time. This is the process of using panel bond and adhesive in addition to rivets to hold the panel together. You know, it works well, it's good for corrosion protection because you've got the uh, bond in between the panels, doesn't allow moisture in. You know, that's nothing new. But what is new is they're recommending that more from the manufacturer. Now the reason they're, one of the reasons they're uh, recommending this is so that you don't overheat the panel because of the different types of steels. You don't want to overheat some of the high strength steels, ultra high strength steels, because if you do, you're going to destroy the, the metal. You know, if it was ultra high strength steel, it's now weaker. It might be similar to mild steel. And so if that car's involved in a wreck, it's not going to have that strength like it should. So rather than uh, having procedure to weld, they are coming up with recommendations like weld bonding to replace that. Even if it was welded from the factory, uh, it's, if you repair it, they're saying don't weld it. This is what you do. You're going to use rivet bonding. So, and there's a lot of procedures out there. But uh, this is one of them that they talked about that's going to become more popular and more recommended uh, through these repair procedures. Fusion welding aluminum to steel. Now this is something I was uh, not that aware of, but it is something that they are doing at the manufacturing. Guess what? We can't do that in the body shop. We cannot reproduce a fusion weld to aluminum to steel. So if they're manufacturing stuff in a way that we can't reproduce it, what do we do? Well, we're going to have to look at those uh, manufacturer repair procedures to see what they recommend. Now, they may recommend something like we just discussed, the weld or the uh, panel bonding, or they may have something different. And uh, in the next few years, who knows? There may be something completely different. So we're going to have to find those repair procedures to uh, find out what's recommended. Now, if you're DIY out there, you know, working on things at your house, hobby, some older cars, restoration project, don't let this scare you. I mean, this is for the newer cars that are very, can becoming very complex we can't repair them the way they used to be. Now the older cars, you know, they're still the same, you know, a lot of the same repair methods, a lot of mild steel. But if you're doing this at your house and you're trying to get into some real complex repairs, you know, some frame repair or, you know, something like that, you know, it's going to become pretty difficult and, you know, I don't know if I'd recommend doing that unless you're real knowledgeable about that. Now this is something kind of alarming. They said there's currently about 20 million OEM pages and that's the recommendations we're talking about you know, the repair procedures that the manufacturer has. You know, they, if you are replacing a front rail, how do you repair it? Or how do you replace it? You know, you look up the recommendations and it'll tell you, you know, what they recommend. There's already 20 million of those out there. That's a lot of uh, paperwork. Now, over the next 
six months. This is what they said at this at this training at this class. They said that is going to triple. That's a lot of repair procedures, and that's a lot of procedures to keep up with. So if you don't have the ability to find these recommended procedures, you may be in for a surprise when you go to fix one of these cars. Weld location. This is something else that they brought up with this class. Now I've always been taught, and and you know even an I car that if it had a five spot welds, you know from the factory, you replace it with five spot welds or five plug welds. You know you replace the original amount. But there's procedures now that that it's changing things. You know for example if it has five, it may have six for the repair procedures. Now why they're doing that I don't know. They gave an example there of a, of a car that had on, on a certain area had 22 spot welds. Well, if you repair that, the recommendation is 23. Now, what the purpose of that is, why they want that one extra one for repair, I don't know, but that's procedures, and, and if we didn't know that, we would go ahead and repair it like we always would. So, so it's important that we find these repair procedures, you know, to find out what the manufacturer is, uh, is recommending for us. So it's important, it's going to become even more important as we go on, as we move forward with these newer cars, that we are able to access these repair procedures so that we can find out what the manufacturer's uh, recommendations are. Painting sensors. This is something else that was uh, brought up there, and you know, I was already aware of this, but in case uh, this may be something you need to know, you know on your front bumper covers you have a lot of sensors now, and they're painted you know, from the factory. But you can't just paint over those. There's a mill thickness and it cannot go over that mill thickness. So you have to be aware of that and know that those can only be paid a, or painted a certain mill thickness. Or else that sensor is not going to work right. Tire pressure monitors. Now this is something in your tire. It, it'll tell you inside you know, what your tire pressure is and if you're low. But uh, there's repair procedures for how are you going to reset that. And if you don't know, you're going to have to be sending this car out to the dealership, and that's going to cost you time and money. But there are repair procedures for this, and some of them's very simple. I mean, some of them put the tire, tire and wheel back on and drive it, and that'll reset it. Some of them uses the remote, that'll reset it. And there's a lot of other ones. No one uniform way. Every manufacturer has their own way. I wish they would get more uh, uniform with that and, and have one way that they're all set, but that's probably never going to happen. But it could be just as easy as a, as a push of the button and you don't know that, and you're spending time and money getting that to the dealership to let them do that. So uh, if you had the recommendations, it'd be a simple process. You look at it and you'd know exactly what to do. And that would dramatically reduce your cycle time. Well, this was just a quick summary of the class I took there and I uh, wanted to point out some of the important things, you know, the importance of having the repair procedures, some of the different changes that are being made in cars, and a lot of changes going to be made in the next few years. So you need to be prepared. You know, if you're a shop out there, it's something you need to think about. that need to be prepared. But, but the class basically boiled down to this, having the correct repair procedures. Now that you know a few of the repair methods that we talked about, a few of the newer repair methods being made on cars and, and what's uh, going on behind the, the shop door when your car is being repaired, I have a few questions for you. Okay, first one. What do you consider the biggest change in cars over the past five years? What's the biggest change you've seen in cars over the past five years? And number two, what do you think cars are going to look like in ten years? You know, how are they going to be made? What materials are they going to be used to make them? Uh, what are they going to look like? Uh, have any ideas? Be sure and leave us a comment below. Just go down here in the comment section, leave us a comment and let us know what you think. And also be sure to, to uh, go up top, subscribe to this channel. And also be sure and go to collisionblast.com where there's free access to auto body and paint training. All you have to go there and you subscribe for free. So subscribe to this channel, go to collisionblast.com, subscribe to us there, and leave a comment right here below and let us know what you think about these questions. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time. How do we They got all this stuff stupid. They got all this stuff. I mean, they got all this new